Um, someone sent me a message recently. Um, oh yes, reading YouTube. Uh, one Shukijo, which is his name I'm probably butchering. I don't speak Japanese. Um, even if my channel name is Japanese. And he asked me, how do you find a good therapist? Which is an excellent question. And I asked my therapist about this before I made this video. And I promise this video is going to be much more upbeat than Monday's was. Um, I've had four therapists in my life. The first was a psychiatrist. He issued me a prescription for an antidepressant called Trofenol, which I believe is no longer used. And I don't know if he dosed me too heavy or the person that gave me the prescription couldn't tell that he wrote a 2 instead of a 7, but he was supposed to give me 25 millig milligrams and he, I got 75 milligrams and I spent three days walking through Jello. I stopped taking it and I never went back to the guy. I literally didn't see another therapist until I was 34, 20 years later. That's, that's what it was. That's how long it was. I believe it was 34 or 30. Oh, I might even be 36, but a long friggin' time. The second person was an intern, a Brazilian woman from, uh, either a Brazilian woman who was an intern, um, through Catholic Charities. They have a sliding scale so I could afford to go there, and I figured the Catholics owed me. Um, and she helped me get to the point where I needed to, needed to realize I should get divorced. So that was helpful. But she really wasn't the right fit for me to go further. And I don't think I was also in the right place. Um, I carry three of my five cards in my pocket. And the thing I do most of them, most of the time, is write notes for my therapist. I fill an entire three by five card with notes in a two week time period. I bring to my, my therapist every two weeks to discuss. I don't ever stop working on my therapy. He's very proud. He said, he said, he said, he said you do a month's worth of work in two day, two weeks. He likes working with me. Because I'm trying. He appreciates that. The third one was a woman working in the clinic where I am still going. She realized that the type of problem I had, PTSD related to child abuse and sexual abuse, was something that she did not really know how to handle. That the guy in charge of the place was an expert at that and she wasn't. So she passed, hit, passed me on to him and Stephen and I have gotten along fabulously and we have made great strides together. So, one of the things you need to do is find the right therapist. Now, some insurance companies are going to be pissed off if you shop around for a therapist. They're going to say, oh, we're, we're skipping, it's, you're not really trying to get better and all that crap. No, that's bull. Give it three sessions. If it doesn't click in three sessions, find another therapist. And, this is one of the reasons my next advice is go to a clinic. Go to a place where there is a bunch of therapists all under one roof. That way you can get internal references. And even if they have to reference you to someone outside, you will have more than one opinion within the same clinic as to where you should go. That should make it easier for you. You also have to be willing to want to go to therapy. <laughs> this seems bleeding obvious, but it isn't. My therapist has told me, I mean, he's not breaching confidentiality here, but that he's got clients who only work on their problems when they're in crisis. And as an analogy I've used before, you don't fix the engine of a car when you're going down the road at 60 miles an hour. You have to stop the car, and you have to work on it in a moment of calm, of stillness. But when most people are in that moment of calm and stillness, they don't want to dig up the crap that put them in the crisis state because it's painful. It's ugly. They don't want to do it. But that's when you have to fix the engine. When it's not moving. So you have to make sure that you are willing to work. And it is work. You don't do it just when you're in a session. You don't do it just when you're in crisis. You do it all the time. You don't have to obsess about it. I'm not telling you that. But you have to be willing to put yourself into it. You have to be willing to listen to what your therapy, therapist says and let those ideas percolate through you, saturate you, and you will f bear fruit from this. I had something happen the other day, and this is on... I didn't tell you this. I'm, on, I'm, the, I'm the client. Where I, said, I wrote in the, on my card, I said, you're always one step ahead of me. Now, he's a therapist. He's supposed to be one step ahead of me. 
Then, like, minutes later, I got this evil Grinch stole Christmas grin on his face. And I literally just, just crawled across my face. And I wrote down, but I'm catching up. And I laughed out loud. Because I am. I'm on the trail. I know where it's going. I may not have that goal completely in sight yet. But I'm aimed at it. So make sure you're seeing the right kind of therapist. I'm going to tell you to go see a cognitive behavior therapist. Don't see a Freudian. No insurance company is going to pay for your Freudian sessions. So that right there is probably going to tell you why you don't want to see a Freudian therapist. Because Freudian therapy can take years and years and years, cost you incredible amounts of money, and you won't get anywhere near as far as you will in just a few sessions of cognitive behavior therapy. Because cognitive behavior therapy is about results. You also have to make sure you have the right fit for the therapist. It's finding the right one here. So, for example, my therapist, I asked him about this. He said he knows a woman. She's this incredible, hippie, groovy, crunchy artist type. She goes to this Vulcan of a therapist intentionally because this person is so far outside of her mental models that she finds it challenging. Because if your therapist is softballing everything, you're not going to get anywhere. And if they're too challenging, you're going to feel overwhelmed that you can't get anywhere. So you need to find that middle ground where you're being challenged, but you're not being overwhelmed. And again, that may take more than one therapist to try. Find a therapist that does more than one type of thing. My therapy, my therapist deals with music. He deals with art. He deals with um, ERMD. He deals with and just talking to the client and listening to what they have to say and giving them advice and thoughts, which is pretty much what I do. And having a therapist that that has uh, more than one tool in his toolbox or her toolbox is important. It doesn't hurt that my therapist an actual has a, an actual PhD. He's got a little mortar board in the whole nine yards. Technically, he's a doctor. No, he doesn't actually use that except jokingly to call himself Dr. Steve occasionally. Um, but this is very useful if your therapist has more than one tool in their toolbox, more than one method at their disposal. He mentioned that he had one client who had originally gone to a therapist, years of therapy, and when we finally got to the root of the problem, which was sexual abuse as a child, the therapist was like, ah, I don't treat that. <laughs> the person's like, what? So the per client actually started seeing my therapist and their old therapist, and eventually they stopped seeing their old therapist. Why? Because the new therapist, my therapist, actually helped them. <laughs> and that's the goal here. To become better, to become healthier, to no longer have broken mental models, but ones that work. To be calm. To be at peace with yourself. To quiet the voices. To move away the clouds. To be able to see the world around you with clarity and vision for the first time. See the patterns of your own behavior. Just recently, I got frustrated at myself. I was, it was something stupid. It's like picking up something. I couldn't get a hand on it. And I started to get really frustrated. So I know I said, stop. Out loud, I said, stop. It doesn't matter if it makes no sense. Use both hands. It's inefficient. It doesn't matter. I ignore the fact that it's inefficient. Ignore that there's a button inside your head being pushed by the fact that it's inefficient. Just get the job done with two hands and don't be frustrated. And yeah, it took me two minutes longer than I would have if I'd only used one hand. But guess what? The job got done and I didn't get frustrated. And I do a lot of that. 
I often have to speak out loud to break myself out of those those patterns and behaviors. There's nothing wrong with that. Someone else around you doesn't like it, screw them. Your mental health is more important than whatever social faux pas you might be breaking or bruising. Self-care is the most important thing you can achieve right now. You have to be healthy. Because you can't help anybody else until you are. I have people contacting me all the time asking for advice. And I give them what I can. I always tell them I'm not a professional. And I try to point them in the direction of someone that is where they live. To the extent I've actually looked up therapists where they live and said, here is a clinic in your area. Call them. I don't even play a therapist on TV. But you can get better. And you can find the right fit with your therapist. It just may take a little work. And when you find them, you're going to have to be willing to put the effort in. Because your therapist can't, ther- therapist can't fix you. They can't do it for you. No more than someone else can walk up a mountain for you. You have to do it yourself. One foot in front of the other. And there's one important thing. There's an old saying. I, in fact, I used it myself a thousand times. That when you're walking through hell, marching through hell, don't stop. Well, that's bullshit. Because you're not marching through hell. That's an illusion. It's a myth. It's a lie. It's your anxiety and depression telling you that to keep you in place, to hold you back. To convince you that you can't do it. If I may quote Josie Wales, get plum mad dog me. Because if you get up, give up. You neither live nor win. Don't give up. Don't listen to the lies. You can do this. You have it in you. You always have. The world lied to you at some point. It could have been your friends, your family, a coach, a scoutmaster. It could have been anybody. I stop. Your therapy will help you find the truth. You are strong and capable. You can be happy and healthy and clear. If I may borrow a line from the nut jobs of Scientology. You can do it. Your therapist will help you. Before you know it, you'll be moving mountains.